think I have a clip here. Let me see if this will play. It's about 30 seconds, and it's, um, you can respond to it. Whether uh, Genesis 1 describes God as bringing into being the things that are described, uh, whether he uses material or not, or does he merely specify the functions for things that are already in existence? I think that we have to guard here against erecting false dichotomies. Just because a text speaks of God specifying an object's function doesn't ex exclude efficient causation as well. Walton has to show that the text of Genesis 1 is concerned exclusively with functional creation. It is not enough to show that functional creation is involved. He has to show that efficient causation does not come into the picture at all. All right. Walton, that was William Lane Craig, obviously. He speaks of you very highly. He said that, you know, that you're a super bright person, that you're a prolific author. You know, he obviously spoke about you very highly. Um, he said that he had correspondence with you, so... He obviously understands that that you're a scholar of top rank, right? But he has the, one of this is one of the critiques that he has, and I just wondered, did you want to respond to that and kind of tell us what what do you see wrong with with that critique? Well, one of the most common critiques, um, you know, Dr. Craig didn't make this up. One of the most common critiques is people who say, "Why can't it be both?" You know, it's all well and good to talk about how order and function and role and purpose are significant in the biblical text, but why can't it be material too? And that's basically the nature of his question. Uh, I don't have to prove that it is only function and order. It's not like the burden of proof is on me. I had to prove that there was function and order involved. Now, he sounds like he's assuming that material must be involved. You can't assume that. Uh, prove it to me. Show that material is involved. And so I go through day one, nothing material. It's time, light. Those are not material. Day two, space, nothing material. Day three, it says let the plants grow. Let the dry land emerge. It doesn't say he made them. Nothing material. Day four. He made the sun, moon, and stars, or he did the sun, moon, and stars. Okay. It, those sound material, but of course they're not to the Israelites. And therefore, an Israelite wouldn't read day four and say, oh, here God is making material objects. Well, no, they don't think they're material objects. They think they're lights. Day five, let fish swarm, let, let birds team, you know. When day after day after day after day, it doesn't talk about the material, that, that leads me as a hopefully sensitive reader to say that wasn't very interesting to them. But again, I have to emphasize that doesn't mean that God did not create the material world. Of course he did. And when he created the material world, our theology tells us he created it out of nothing because there's no material that that was not created by God. So I absolutely believe in creation out of nothing, but I don't think Genesis 1 is talking about creation out of nothing because creation out of nothing is a material category. And if it's not talking in material categories, then that is not its interest. And so in that sense, I feel like there's a burden of proof that they need to pick up to say, why do you think that it is material? And they're trying to say, I have the burden of proof to prove that it's not material. And you yeah. heard what my proof is. Yeah, great point. Um, so, yeah, I really like both of you guys, of course. And I'm sure you, you guys like each other, obviously. I'm sure you, you've appreciated some of the work of Craig as well. Um, I've actually talked to Craig's people. I may end up having him on the show, um, they said, per perhaps. So we'll see. Um, but... I would love to hear a discussion between you two in the future at some point. You know, maybe that would be fruitful for the edification. Well, he mentions that we've that we've communicated and we have, mm -hmm. and I've told him these things. 
and I've told him about places where he's misunderstood or even misrepresented me, and he hasn't changed anything. So that makes me feel like he's not really much interested in productive thinking, and I'm just not interested in arguing with people. I understand. Well, thank you so much for answering those questions. Um, we're going to go to Q&A.